This is Dr. Ann Hoff Swanberg, and I'm talking to you today about a subject that's very, very important to me, academic integrity. It's important to me because it's important that my students take pride in their own thoughts. We here at Lawson want to make sure that you get the most out of your education, and academic integrity is a big part of that. What is integrity? According to the American Heritage Dictionary, integrity means steadfast adherence to a strict moral or ethical code. But what exactly does that mean? That means that a person with integrity always does what is right, even when what is right is a tough choice. A person who has integrity always sticks to a strict moral or ethical code and makes their decisions accordingly. Integrity also means the quality or condition of being whole or undivided or of completeness. I like this definition of integrity because it reminds me what integrity is really all about, which is staying strong and complete. People who have integrity are complete and whole people whose spirits are strong. Academic integrity means several things. One, it means always doing your own work your own thinking, your own writing, your own studying. Academic integrity also means being proud of your own thoughts and accomplishments, no matter how big or small they are. What you have done is an accomplishment for you. Academic integrity also means knowing when to accept help and when to work independently. Sometimes it's important to ask for help, and sometimes it's important to work independently, even if the work doesn't turn out as well. Academic integrity also means admitting when something is hard for you and seeking help from tutors and teachers instead of trying to hide, avoid, cheat, or plagiarize. Most of the time when people plagiarize, it's because they're panicking. Academic integrity also means accepting that we can learn from failures as well as success and that everyone experiences setbacks. Most of the time when people have a struggle with academic integrity, it's because they're afraid of failure. You just have to remember that everybody experiences failures, and it's not a failure in your moral life. It's just a reason to start again and to try a different tactic. Remember, if you fail honorably, you can come back from that. What is cheating? Cheating is the breaking of rules to gain an advantage in a competitive situation. It can also be the breaking of rules when the only person you're competing against is yourself. You can cheat on a quiz or a test by using an electronic device to look up answers, by looking at secret written answers during a test, by asking another student to tell you what is on a test before you take it, or simply by looking at another student's answers. None of these are appropriate. It's important for you to do your own work. Who gets cheated? When you cheat, you get cheated. You are paying for an education. An education means that you have learned and mastered the material, not just that you've earned a grade. If you cheat and get an A, but you still don't know the material, then you have robbed yourself of that education and gotten yourself really nowhere. Your classmates also get cheated. When you cheat off other students' tests or work, it's abusing your classmates. They're working hard for their grades, and they don't deserve to be used or exploited. What is plagiarism? There's a definition of plagiarism on every syllabus that gets handed out at Lawson State. Here's what it says. Plagiarism is using someone else's ideas or phrasing and representing those ideas or phrasings as your own, either on purpose or through carelessness. That's plagiarism. Remember, even if you read it and remembered it and type it in and pretend it's yours, that carelessness has caused you to plagiarize. Plagiarism is also using any ideas or phrasings. That means any written or spoken material. It can be a whole paper, a paragraph, a sentence, or even just a phrase. If it doesn't belong to you, that's plagiarism. Plagiarism can also include statistics, lab results, artwork, music. Anything that's not yours that you pretend is yours constitutes plagiarism. A plagiarized source can be a professional source, a published writer or critic in a book, magazine, encyclopedia, or journal. It can be an electronic source, such as material found on the internet. It can even be from another student, a tutor, or relative. The person doesn't have to be published for it to be plagiarism. 
if you didn't write it and it's not your idea and you pretend it is, that's plagiarism. Paraphrasing, putting source material into your own words without proper citation and documentation still constitutes plagiarism. If the idea isn't yours, that's plagiarism. Who plagiarizes? Most of the time, people who plagiarize are not bad people. They're panicking people. Usually, a student who makes the decision to plagiarize is facing failure because they are up against a deadline they cannot meet or trying to complete work that is too advanced for them at that moment. They do not want to fail, and they know they cannot get the work done, so they decide to get some help. We understand that this is not a decision that you make because you are a dishonest person at heart. But nevertheless, it's a really poor choice. The better choice is to deal with the situation face, down, face on. What happens if you fail? Nobody likes to fail, yet every person in the world experiences failure at some point in their lives. When you fail, you may have to start over. We know this may cost you time and money, and nobody likes that situation. You may even have to back up. You may have gotten into a class that's over your head or ahead of where you need to be, and you may need to take two steps back to get to a place where you can conf confidently complete the work. If you fail honorably, you can replace a failing grade by retaking a class. And if you fail honorably, you can be proud to know that you did your best. Or, if you didn't do your best, you can be proud knowing that you know how to improve next time. Or, you can even be comforted that your failure was caused by factors beyond your control. Sometimes our life gets a little too difficult for us, and that's not our fault. If you fail honorably, there's no shame in that. You just get to try again. What happens if I cheat or plagiarize? That's a different story. You receive a zero for the paper or project, which cannot be replaced by redoing the assignment. If that zero causes you to fail a course, that grade cannot be replaced by retaking the course. That grade stays part of your GPA even after you've retaken the course and passed it. A note is placed in your academic file that says that you have committed one act of academic dishonesty. If you are caught plagiarizing or cheating, again, Lawson can pursue disciplinary action, which may include suspension or even expulsion. A student who is expelled for academic dishonesty from one school may have a really hard time being accepted at a different school. Not to mention, you lose the trust of your teachers and you have to struggle with a guilty conscience. What does honest work look like? Here's a wonderful piece of student writing. In the beginning of the novel, Janie was put under the bus by other females who may have wanted to be in her place. They really didn't care for her or care to be around her, at least that's how they made it seem. The females always had some judgment to pass about Janie. However, the females judged her, and Janie never let it bother her, and that's when I began to think she was a strong woman. I wouldn't say that Janie changed in a bad way, but she did have her weak moments. Janie let men beat her, use her for money, and just not respect a woman's worth. Janie also was easily influenced by a man, I would have to say, because she let a man decide if she was beautiful or not. She should have known how she felt about herself and not let a man decide for her. That's a lovely piece of student writing. We get the student's thoughts and the student's words, and the words are smart and they're good enough. What does plagiarism look like? Here's some previously published writing on the same topic. Believe it or not, a student handed this work in and pretended it was her own. Janie searches for spiritual enlightenment and a song strong sense of her own identity. She is a woman, but defies gender stereotypes by insisting on her independence and wearing overalls. Behind her defiance, a curiosity and confidence drive her to experience the world and become conscious of her relation to it. Janie's maturity will rest in her ability to realize that others' cruelty toward her or their inability to understand her stems not from malice, but from their upbringing or limited perspective. Throughout the novel, Janie grows more and more defeated. She silently submits to Jody's imperious nature and performs her duties while ignoring her emotions. She feels her spirit detached from her body. She watches herself at work at the store and submit to Jody, while her mind is really elsewhere. 
This detachment allows her to accept stoically a life that she has grown to hate. This is beautiful writing, but it's not student writing, and most of your teachers can tell. This is how we can tell. Check for yourself. Can you use the following words and phrases in a sentence? The student who turned this work in as her own could not, and that's what gave it away. Enlightenment? Gender stereotypes? What does it mean to have drive? What does it mean to say something stems from something else? What do they mean by limited perspective? Why is she detaching? Why is she defiant and def showing defiance? What does it mean that she's conscious of something? What does it mean that she doesn't act with malice or does act with malice? Why are we calling Jody's stance imperious? And what does it mean to stoically submit to it? The student wasn't able to answer these questions, and it was very clear they hadn't done their own work. Here are some examples of plagiarism. Number one, you take too much help from a peer or tutor. They suggest in words and phrases that you are unfamiliar to you, but they sound impressive, so you use them. Let's look at it. You wrote, I like things to be explained simply. That's a perfectly good sentence. They thought it was a little dull, so they suggested, I prefer concepts to be delineated succinctly and concisely. It means the same thing, and you decide theirs sounds better, so you use their words. But that's plagiarism. The sentence the student wrote, I like things to be explained simply, is good enough. Examples of plagiarism number two. You have been asked to write about a poem. You don't understand the poem, so you look on the internet for some ideas. One website tells you that the poem is about God because it uses images of lambs, doves, and eagles. You write a paper saying that the poem is about God because it about, it's about lambs, doves, and eagles. That is plagiarism. If the idea isn't yours, you can't use it. You have to come up with your own idea. Another example of plagiarism. You read in a book review that the book is about, quote, a humble mining family in rural Alabama deep in the Depression era when resources were scarce. You write in your paper that the book is about a humble mining family in rural Alabama when resources were hard to find. Just because you changed scarce to hard to find does not mean these are your own words. Even if you put some of the phrase in your own words, if you plagiarize closely and you don't provide a citation, that's plagiarism. Another example of plagiarism is this. If your essay consists of wall-to-wall -wall quotes and none of your own ideas, that's plagiarism. You must use mostly your own ideas, even in a paper that allows you to do some research. The bottom line is, we want to know what you think, and the research is just there to back it up. Our last example of plagiarism for today is that you cut and pasted ideas from the internet and turned them in as if they were your own work. And what you handed in can be found on the internet word for word. It's blatant, and you think maybe you won't do that, but when you panic, you might. Your teacher can tell, and that's plagiarism. Remember, your thoughts are valuable, so you should always use your own thoughts. Also, this is your education, and you have to work for it. If you do, it'll mean so much more. Also, sometimes you may fail. If you fail honorably, you can hold your head high and try again. Finally, the consequences of cheating or plagiarizing are not worth the benefits. The bottom line is, your thoughts are good enough, smart enough, and they are important. Use them.